Hello everyone, thank you and welcome to this webinar this morning. So I'll just give a quick bio on Dr. Angela before we get into the questions, guys. Now, Dr. Angela Pascoe is a wife. She's a mother of three children, so at nine years, 10 years and 16 years old. She's been in practice as a chiropractor for eight and a half years now. And Angela's wellness clinic consists of massage, acupuncture and chiropractic. Angela is a visionary and has an unyielding passion for delivering wellness to the world through chiropractic practic and nutrigenomics. So welcome, welcome Angela and thank you so much for being here with us. Now how did you become aware of oxidative stress and what exactly is oxidative stress? Can you explain that for us please? Sure. So it was actually, I, I, I always knew about free radicals. When I ask people if they've heard of oxidative stress and I get that deer in the headlight stare, um, I, I used to be that way too. It basically, and then I ask them, do you know what free radicals are? I get a lot more nods, a lot more yeses. Um, it's a large number of those free radicals that lead to a cell that, that has oxidative stress. It's, it's essentially a sick cell. We're rusting from the inside out. So, and we get, we get these things from the air that we breathe. We're just all sitting in front of a computer right now. Our cell phones, um, the EMFs, the, the benzene we breathe when we pump our gas, financial stress, you name it. It's unavoidable. Um, too much exercise, too little exercise will induce oxidative stress or increase free radical damage in our cells. And this damage that's happening is cumulative. As we age, that's why we see a lot of conditions later in life manifesting because our body's ability to fight these free radicals or fight this oxidative stress um, becomes less as we age. And a lot of kids are being bombarded with oxidative stress and cellular stress. And that's why we're seeing higher rates, I believe, in children of cancers and autism and you name it, because we're losing that ability to combat this damage that's, that's being done inside of our cells. So it's, um, I tell people all the time, if you're breathing, you're creating oxidative stress. Just metabolizing our food when our body produces energy, a byproduct of that energy production is a free radical. So just eating food, just breathing will, will create these free radicals in our cells. And one thing that I found out, a direct antioxidant like a vitamin C molecule, that only neutralizes one free radical. If say, say, that, say that vitamin C has 60 antioxidant molecules in it, it's only going to neutralize 60 free radicals. It's a one-to-one -one ratio. So when I found out about this, and I found out that our body's own enzymes, by activating, turning on nerve two, they actually, one of our body's antioxidant enzymes neutralize a million free radicals per second, every second. It's like turning a fire hose on and putting it in every room of a house that's on fire. So it just made more sense to me to turn on my body's own antioxidants versus taking you know, taking a direct antioxidant. I knew about free radicals as a chiropractic student and, and even, even before that, but the term oxidative stress is something I'd never heard about until a patient of mine came to me with an ABC investigative report that some of you may have seen um, regarding oxidative stress and nerve two activation. Um, and that's where I started diving in and learning more about oxidative stress. But essentially, it's a large number of free radicals inside of our body, um, and our body loses that ability to fight them off, and it leads to cells that are just incredibly sick. Wow, great answer. Thank you. Um, can you go into a bit more about how oxidative stress actually affects us, you know, what the outcome of that is? Sure. Oh, man. So go to, if you guys don't know, go to pubmed.gov. Type in oxidative stress. You'll find now, I just did this today because I had to look. There's over 193,000 studies on oxidative stress. First of all, PubMed.gov is the National Institute of Health's website. It's where all published peer-reviewed research, so gold standard research is. It's where all doctors, all people that want credible research, it's where we go to find credible research. Back in 2011, when I found out about this, there were 87,000 studies on oxidative stress. There's now over 193,000 studies. That's a huge, huge deal. Um, and uh, yeah, and even Nerf 2, I, I went and I typed that in, and there were 10,000, over 10,000 studies on Nerf 2. In 2011, there were 500. So it's the direction research is headed. Research is really picking up on, you know, oxidative stress is linked to over 250 conditions as its primary cause. Things like heart attacks, psoriasis, melanoma skin cancer, any arthritis you can think of. Um, inflammation, at the root of inflammation is oxidative stress. 
um, chronic, uh, chronic inflammation, diabetes, um, cataracts, macular degeneration. Type in though oxidative stress and whatever condition you're concerned with. When I first learned about this, my son struggled with ADHD since the time he was three. That's what I typed in. I found thousands of studies linking the two. And I realized at that point, if I can lower oxidative stress, if we can lower the root cause of over 250 diseases, we can help with a lot of the, the symptoms associated with these conditions. So it's like putting the fire out. So it's linked to, every, it's linked to almost everything. But if you're curious about something specific, I always educate people. I tell them, go to pubmed.gov, type in oxidative stress and whatever you're concerned with and see if there's that link. So Dr. Pasco, can you tell us or, or help us understand why it's important to take charge of our own oxidative stress and reduce that for ourselves? Sure. Well, oxidative stress, it's cumulative, right? So as we age, I love the analogy. I love using analogies. I think people can, can understand things better. Um, I heard the analogy. One of the, the gentlemen on this company said that when we're young, we produce garbage, but we have a lot of garbage men cleaning up that garbage in our cells, in our body. Um, as we age, we continue to produce the garbage, but we lose the number of garbage men. So by turning on that nerve two pathway, we increase the body's own antioxidant enzymes, and then we can, we've got more garbage men to clean up that garbage. So it's this cumulative effect, and you can eat very well. A lot of people say, well, I eat clean. I'm, you know, raw food, organic. I'm, you know, vegan, whatever, they're, whatever um, they, they believe they eat well enough. You guys, you'd have to eat like 376 oranges, I believe, to to induce nerve two the way that the one little yellow pill turns on the nerve two pathway, increases our own antioxidants, which then neutralize free radicals at a rate of a million to one. It's a no-brainer. Turn on your body's own own pharmacy. Okay, so you did mention NRF2. Can you go into a little bit more about that and what that means before we go into a bit more about protanin? Sure, absolutely. So NRF2 is a protein, it's in our cells, it's in every single cell of our body. I always say we live and die at the cellular level. So NRF2 was discovered in 93 in Japan, so that's why most people, most doctors, they're finally beginning to hear about it, especially you saw, right, 2011, or you heard there were only 500 studies on NRF2 on PubMed, now there's over 10,000 studies, and I believe 2,000 um, of them alone this year, over 2,000 studies. So, so nerve two protein in our cells, right? If you don't have something that activates it or turns it on, it's dormant. It's not doing anything in our body. So you need an activator. So, so what we do is we, we take protandum, it activates nerve two in our cells, turns it on. Nerve two then attaches to our DNA, telling the body, make more of your own antioxidants. It also has been known to tune close to 500 genes that's huge. Um, one of the studies that we have are on Alzheimer's, colon cancer, and atherosclerosis, plaque in the arteries. And it showed in all three of those conditions, the genes were altered, activating nerve two in a positive way. So it's incredible. We no longer have to feel plagued by genetic disorders. Like, you know, grandpa died of a heart attack, which my grandpa did at a young age. You know, my, my mom, you worried about that. We don't have to be so fearful of these genetic conditions because we've got the ability to tune our genes. And nutritionists, herbalists have known this for a long time. It's nutrigenomics. It's how food in combination can alter our genes. Dr. Pasco, there are so many products on the market that everyone believes are this magic miracle pill. You know, we hear that a lot. Um, why can we believe that Protanum really will do what it claims to do? Sure. Um, so why we can believe what it claims to do is because we have that peer-reviewed evidence. We have um, now 24 peer-reviewed studies. Go onto that website, pubmed.gov, type in ProTandem, and you'll see 24 published peer-reviewed studies. And these are from independent parties. This isn't LifeVantage doing a study saying, this is what we found. This is, these are places like Vanderbilt, places like Harvard, Louisiana State, um, you know, places around the world that have studied this and validated it for us. So it's already been proven. When people say I need to do my research, I think they just need to read more and understand more because the research has already been done. That's what, you know, that's why we were able to make that claim. We're able to make the claim that Protanum reduces oxidative stress 40% 30 days. It's because we have that first peer-reviewed study proving it. 
So that's the difference between, you know, what we have our hands on and, and what other people may have is we have that peer reviewed, peer reviewed evidence. So let's go on to the next question. Some of our guests are saying um, that they're healthy, they already eat very organic, um, they may eat a lot of raw antioxidant foods, and I know you touched on this before with you know, eating a certain amount of oranges every day <laughs> to make sure you're activating nerve yep. food. Um, but why would they need more antioxidants if they feel like they're very healthy, they eat organic, and they eat, they're eating a lot of antioxidant foods? Why would they need protanum? Because all those, so all the foods that we consume or the supplements that we consume that are direct antioxidants only neutralize, so say we're consuming 500 antioxidants a day. That's only going to neutralize 500 free radicals a day. Well, my analytical brain wanted to know how many free radicals do we produce on a daily basis? 23 septillion. That's 23 with 22 zeros behind it, you guys. So eating those foods, you could eat as healthy, you could be the healthiest eater in the world. It's not enough to combat the free radical damage that we're bombarded with every single day. When our body's own antioxidants, the indirect antioxidants, like the glutathione, the, the SOD or catalase, one of those enzymes neutralize up to a million free radicals per second every second. So back to that firehouse or that house on fire analogy, a direct antioxidant, all the good food that you eat, it's like a Dixie cup of water on the house fire, you guys. The fire hose in every room of the house is our own antioxidants, turning them on. So that's the, differ that's the difference maker. Thank you so much for all that information. And guys, I really hope you've learned some information here today and you can take this to your own people and share it with them as well so we can keep educating people on Protanum and NRF2 activation and what that is doing for us. Um, and who better to learn it from than Dr. Angela Pasco? You've done an amazing job with us today. Thank you so much for sharing all of your wisdom with us. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Have a good day. Bye. <laughs>